Hello, my friends. This is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. I'm so happy you joined me. We are going to make this beautiful cuddle bunny. Um, so wonderful for little hands to hold. Um, take with him uh, at nap time or in the car or when you're shopping or just to play with and to, to hold. It's going to become a favorite for the little um, people in your life or the ones that uh, that you gift these to or that purchase them from you. Um, I can assure you of that. <laughs> um, I used my Addy 46 needle machine. Um, the pink one is Craft Smart Yarn in Blush. The white one is Bernat Super Value. Uh, and the stripe is Craft Smart in a variegated blue and green and gray color. Okay? So um, I also am going to be making a um, baby cuddle bunny. And I'll show you that in a picture right here. And if you um, um, don't see that on my channel yet, it's coming soon. So watch for that and look for that and uh, we'll make that together too. Um, be sure to watch to the end of the video because I will show you how to make the bow tie for um, the white bunny uh, at the end of the video. Okay, so once you have your supplies, let's get started. All right, so we're going to use waste yarn in this project, but not till the um, end of the project. So for, to start with, we're gonna we're going to use our working yarn, um, but we're going to um, put it around our machine, measure it around your machine about um, a length of three. I, <laughs> I keep slipping, so I'm gonna go like this: one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that will be enough to. Um, to make one round that we're gonna use after um, we're finished row 16. So cut that off, put that aside. Okay, and then we're going to do a long tail cast on. Okay, so we're going to um, put our last white needle and our first black needle in yarn with in, in line with our yarn feeder. Now, if you don't, um, if you haven't colored your, your divider between those last two, uh, are these two needles, the last white and first black, then take a permanent black marker and mark it or use nail polish, whatever you prefer. Um, and it helps you to see when the end of your row is coming around. Like, I just think it's genius. <laughs> if I do say so myself, it just works so well. Um, when I'm doing color changes on projects and I'm on that, the last row before my color change, I just always see it coming around and I never, I never um, miss and go, go further and have to back, back, um, go back and pull out my stitches. So, that's just a little hint that I would encourage you to do, okay? Little tip, okay? So behind your first black needle, in front of your next, behind and in front, all the way around. I'm not putting any tension on this yarn. As it slips through my fingers, I'm just letting it go at its own tension, okay? So we're gonna go all the way around until we get to that last white needle. But before we get to the end, we're gonna set our counter to zero so that we are ready um, when we get there, okay? To start counting rows. Okay, now I'm behind or in front of my last white. I'm gonna open my yarn feeder. I'm going to put it inside of there. Okay, get my yarn cake. I've got all these nice new yarn cakes that I've uh, made with my new yarn winder and I'm so excited about it. It comes out of the ball so easily. Okay, and so I'm going to knit for 16 rows. Now I am using Craft Smart yarn in blush. Sometimes this yarn gives me some hassles. So I am going to um, I'm going to go at an even pace until I get some weight on the ends here, okay? And you can use your, your clips, whatever, your weights, whatever you want to use to help you out if you need to. Um, I'm just going to watch every stitch and make sure it catches. And we're going to knit for 16 rows, okay? Nice, even pace, and it's working out fine. I have, I'm letting it slip through my fingers but um, I'm not putting barely any tension on it. Okay, so you go ahead and you keep knitting till you get to 16 rows. And when you get finished 16 rows, see me back. All right, so I finished row 16. I'm going to open my yarn feeder. I'm going to take out that working yarn. I'm not gonna cut it off, I'm just gonna pop it um, into the center of my machine, making sure that it goes around that black or that last white needle because we still have to work it, okay? Now we're going to take that long piece that we cut off, and this is going to be our cinching um, piece for our, our neck, okay? Between our neck and the body. And we're going to hold those two. Let's see, we're going to... Uh, I don't need it to be that long. We're going to hold those two, and then we're going to knit one row, okay? One row with that piece that you cut off.
This yarn I have to help. It's just one of those balls of yarn. I don't buy Craft Smart yarn much anymore because of, of uh, the fact that it's so hard in the machine. Um, but I've got quite a bit left that I want to use. So um, I'm going to put that end behind that last white needle. Then I'm going to find that first one that I did, okay? I'm going to cut them off the same length because then I know which two are my cinching ones when they're the same. Um, but I'm also going to make sure that that um, this yarn, when you pull it back into the yarn feeder, you have to make sure that this end is on the left side of it so that when it comes up and you put it back in your yarn feeder, let me just put that on the floor, then um, this is underneath that working yarn, okay? So then we're just going to uh, set our row counter to zero and we're going to knit 43 rows. Okay, once I've got a few rows there, I'm just going to tie this off just so I know that this is my my cinch yarn, okay? I'm not even going to tie it tight. You'll know because it's hanging there on the 16th row, but I'm just going to give it a little, just like that. And then I'm going to knit 43 rows, okay? So when you're done your 43 rows, we're going to add waist yarn. Oh, now it's going good because the more weight you get on there, and I'm going to add my clips when I, uh, when I'm done, um, you know, this, this part, this section of the video. After I'm done talking to you, I'm going to <laughs> add my clips and I'm going to keep going until I get to row 43 because adding my clips is going to put that weight on there. And I don't have to keep using my hand. Okay. So go ahead and knit out 43 more rows. And when you're done that, see me back. Oops. Oh, this yarn. Clip time. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I just uh, completed my 43rd row. I'm going to take out my tensioner that I added and I'm going to cut off a long tail. Actually, you don't need it too long. I'm actually gonna make that shorter. I was thinking that we were doing a long tail cow stuff, but we're not, we're doing um, waist yarn now. So we're going to put cut that off, put it in the center there. We're gonna take our waist yarn which is a contrasting color so that when we um, when we do a flat edge seamed a, a flat seamed edge on the end here we'll be able to see our working yarn from our waist yarn very easily and pick up those stitches a lot easier so you're going to go ahead now you've added your waist yarn and you're going to um, you're going to knit as many rows as you feel comfortable knitting for waist yarn I always do seven or eight um, rows of waist yarn but whatever you're comfortable doing, okay? We're going to sew up this bottom the first thing that we do. So um, if you were going to to leave your project to sit for a while and it's gonna be jostled around, then I would do more than eight rows. I'd probably do 10 or 12 rows, just because um, the yarn on the end here tends to unravel a lot quicker. Um, but we're, gonna, we're going to get right at it and sew it up just as, right as soon as we take it off, okay? And then we'll, we'll um, complete, well, we need to do one more, um, one more panel for the inside head. I always double the head um, because I don't like to see the stuffing um, show through on my um, on my knitted projects. So um, that's that's why I do the double head. So I'm going to keep knitting with my waist yarn until I get seven or eight rows, and then I'll see you back. All right. So I've got my desired amount of rows. I'm going to open my latch, put that end. In between the last white and the first black I'm just going to crank around twice this is where my needles are giving me some 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 problems here um I oh see listen to that I said in um, an earlier video that I wasn't going to um, knit anymore in here until I took my machine apart and checked that needle um, and here I go and I thought I would just do one more small project here but this really truly is, I've got to check that out before I make anything else other than this. So we're gonna finish this project. Then I'm going to take my machine apart and I'm going to um, see what's going on in there. I, I really think I have a cracked needle or something. Something's not right. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we're going to um, remove our machine and then we're going to sew up this end here um, so that we can get it closed off and then we're going to come back with our, our machine and make the inside head, all right? All right, so we've got the piece off the machine. We're going to unroll it. We're gonna stretch it. Line up all those stitches, okay? 
we're going to go down to this other side, the side where we've got our waist yarn. We're going to find our first and our last stitch. Let me just lower my camera one tiny little bit so you can see better. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to undo that little slip knot that I did. Now you'll right away see that where this waist yarn is coming out, it's coming out of this loop there. We're going to use that as our first stitch and we're going to put a stitch marker in there, a lovely bobby pin. Then we're going to go to the left of it and we see two, two stitches, one on top of the other. If you pull this working yarn, um, what it is, it's going underneath that yarn and it's making this loop right here. That's the one you're going to choose, the one on the top. Okay, then we're going to put those on the outside because we don't want to sew them in. We know that we have 46 stitches on this uh, panel because we used a 46 needle addy. So to get to the halfway point over here, we're going to count 23. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 23 and 24 are our side stitches. Okay, I'm going to go under 24. I've got, I think I'm using a 4.25 hook. It doesn't matter. They'll use what's ever comfortable for you. And I'm going to pick up um, the 23rd one and put it through that loop that's on the hook and count that as two because the first one, number 24, I put on my hook was number one. Let me do that again. Okay, so we counted 23 and 24. I'm going to put 24 on my hook. So that's my first worked stitch. Go up and take 23. So that's two. Go down to the bottom row here. Pick it up, go through the loop on the hook, three, go to the top, pick it up, go through the loop on my hook, that's four, and we're going to go back and forth like that, counting until we get um, to 46 stitches, because you don't want to miss any, you want to make sure you capture them all, um, get them all through the loop on your hook, okay? So back and forth from the bottom to the top, putting them through the loop on your hook, until you get all 46 stitches worked, counting that first one that you put on your hook, okay? I'll see you when I get to um, the last two stitches. All right, made it to the last two. So all I have to do if they're tight is pull up on that bobby pin, put my crochet hook underneath it, slip that bobby pin out, work that stitch, do the same with the other one. Sometimes those last two are hard to see, so um, that's why these stitch markers are amazing. Okay, work that last one, that was 46. I'm gonna yarn over with the tail there, pull it through so I can fasten off. Now I can remove this waist yarn. Okay, because we did it at the bottom of our project, it's very, very easy to take off. So you just pull it off, just like so. Okay. And I'm going to roll that up and reuse it because it's a good piece of yarn. Okay. And then you have a beautiful, beautiful finished edge. Just like that. See, it's gorgeous. So you're going to take your darning needle. You're going to attach this end. And you're going to just hide it underneath the seam there. Go back and forth a couple times and hide that. Okay, so that's how we finish off the bottom part. All right, so we're going to make the inside of the head now. We don't need waist yarn for that. We just need our working yarn. And we're going to bring our last weight, my first black needle, and yarn line with the yarn feeder. We're going to do a long tail cast on. So behind and in front, all the way around. Just like so. Okay, almost there. And it's in front of that last white needle. Open your yarn feeder, pop it in there, set your row counter to zero, and you're going to just knit 16 rows. Okay? So here we go. I've got very loose tension on it just because my machine doesn't like craft smart, a lot of the craft smart colors. And it's mostly the, the lighter colors for some reason. Um, I think they go through a different dyeing process and then they get a little bit, uh, a little bit rougher. And so that's why the machine doesn't like it as much. But um, if I go at this nice even pace, then it seems to be, it seems to be fine. Okay. So you'll figure out what the right pace is for yours if you, um, if you're having trouble. But here I'm just going at a nice even pace and I'm going to finish 16 rows. And when I get to the end of the 16 rows, I'll see you back and we'll do a long tail cast off. All right, so I finished my 16 rows, so I'm gonna cut off a long tail and we're gonna do a long tail cast off together. Okay, so cut that long tail, open your feeder, take that yarn out, put it behind that last white and, be, and that first black, just between those two. Going to thread your needle and we're going to crank our handle 
till this first one is loose. Take that off. Crank it until the next one is loose and it's got buried underneath there. What the heck? Wouldn't that just figure, okay? So I'm gonna just keep going. I'm gonna catch that one at the end, okay? That happens too. This one got caught around those needles and it is um, not gonna come off. So if I back it up so that I can pick that up, then the needles behind here are gonna fall off. So it's best if I just work it around till the end and pick that one up later. Keep going around, catching them with your thumb. Just like that. Until you can remove them all. There's another one that uh, slipped down and it's slipping down as I turn this. So um, I didn't get very far, so this one I can probably, I can probably fix. Just by gently It's not dropping down over these red needles as I um, was turning to cast off. So you got to be very, very careful. So I'm, I'm glad this is happening so you can see it. Um, it's because I was watching, as I was knitting every row, I was watching to make sure this loop went down over the red needles, the red teeth, and I was helping it down. Now that I'm turning this to cast off, I wasn't watching. And so um, some of them weren't slipping down over the red needles. So... Um, that's why that happened, but that's okay. It's it's not a hard fix for me because I'm seeing it right away. So I'm gonna keep picking that up. And I'm gonna just go a little bit slower, making sure. Generally, when you're using yarn that really, that your machine loves, you can crank this so that you have like um, most of your needles exposed and then you just go around and you pick them up. But with yarn that your, your machine has difficulty with, you don't wanna do that. You wanna wanna go one at a time. And the reason being for what I just showed you, um, if, if you're cranking, see this one's gonna not go down over the red teeth. It, it caught onto the needle and it's not going to, and I didn't get very far so I can catch that. Put it down over the red teeth and pick it up. Okay, and that will keep me from dropping the row. So when you have difficult yarn, you're doing a long tail cast off, go very slowly like what I'm doing and uh, make sure that that loop goes over those red teeth before you pick it off. Okay, so in a sense, I'm glad that happened just because it was a teaching moment. So <laughs> um, that's good. Uh, there we go. All right. That one dropped down and dropped down, dropped down. Drop down, drop down. And then here's that one that uh, was giving me trouble, but now it's coming around again and I can pick it up, okay? So there we go. Now I'm gonna remove my machine. Now that we've got that off, I'm gonna remove my machine. I'm gonna stretch this widthwise and lengthwise and I'll see you back, okay? All right, so I'm back. Took a little break, ran upstairs, got myself some popcorn. Oh, so good. This caramel cheese popcorn from Costco. I could just eat it by the bags full. So good. Do you guys find that you snack a lot while you're knitting and finishing your projects? Oh my goodness. What a bad habit. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to pull. We've got our, our inside head here. I'm going to cut this long tail off because I don't need it quite. So oops, let me get that popcorn out before I, before I spill it all over. I'm going to stretch this a little bit more. I started stretching it, but I didn't finish it. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I'm going to pick the popcorn out of my teeth so I can talk. <laughs> and I'm going to tighten this, okay? So now that I have it uh, all pulled snug there, I'm gonna reinforce it with my darning needle, okay? Go around the circle, pick up the top row of stitches. Just like we do when we make a beanie. Same exact thing. We're going to just cinch the top row closed. I'm going to lose that end, so I'm going to put it farther down. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go around the circle twice just to close that end. Pulling every time I pick up a couple stitches. This is going to be the inside of our head, okay? Again, because then when we fill it with fiber fill and we put it inside the main body, main head, then um, you don't see the, the white stuffing through the, through the fabric, which is very important to me. Okay, so here we go. 
pull that through and that's good enough i'm going to tie it off in a knot oops went too fast pulled that under what's this little thing here is that a drop stitch or a loose stitch no nope, just a loose stitch okay if it was a drop stitch then i just would have picked it up with the end of my thing here because this is on the inside so okay tie off a good knot i'm going to do it again Okay, then I'm going to just tuck that into the inside, cut it off, then we're going to pull on that cord that's on the other side to cinch the uh, head, okay? So just pull on it and then unroll it so it's nice and smooth. And get it into a shape about like that then we're going to begin stuffing so grab your fiber fill now every time i use fiber fill i like to pull it apart and then fill i i feel that i i use less when i do that um it's not so compacted from being in the um in the bag okay and so that's just a little thing that i do i take it out and i pull it all apart it seems softer too you don't get little hard clumps in your in your head you, it's just all nice and, and soft and squishy okay you're going to pull on that a little bit more you don't want this to be so firm that it's it's really big because we want a softer head um on our project i'm going to cut some of this off because it's, it's way too long already and it's getting in my way but i am going to put a little bit more there's no right or wrong you just don't want to fill it so full that you can hardly get anything else in okay but um you want it to be soft and squishy like that okay not too firm because then your head's too big stick that in there then i'm going to pull this tight carefully being careful not to break it then i'm going to sew it closed just like i did the other side this time i'm going to use this little gadget that i have to pull the yarn through my needle and i'm going to go around that circle twice and tie it off okay so just like we just did you go ahead and do that and then I'll see you back when you're done, okay? Now that that's finished, I've got a beautiful round head there, nice and soft, beautiful. I'm going to reach inside of this open end of the, actually turn it inside out, it's easier. Turn it inside out. Reach inside of there. Untie this little. This was row 16 when we added that um, one piece of yarn. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is all pulled up. We're going to pull on that. Again, you don't want to break it because then you'll have a problem. <laughs> so we're going to just pull on it. Just like that. I'm going to cut this off a little bit. I always find that really long tails are very, um, well, I'm sure you all do, are hard to work with. So I'm going to just pull that until I get a nice tight. What happened here? Let me see. Oh, all my gathers came to the one side. So all I have to do is just pull it through. But pull that and straighten it out just like this. That scared me there for a minute. I thought, where the heck did it, what happened to my cord? So you're going to pull that until you get it nice and closed. Then you're going to tie it off. You don't want it so tight that you have a squishy neck. You just want it to be just about like that. Just however you like it. So once you start to find it so tight um, that you can't pull it anymore, then, then that's good enough. You don't want a really cinched tight closed neck. Okay. Then I'm going to just tie this off into a knot. triple knot okay cut it off again I don't want these to be peeking through later when they're playing with it you know it might they might just peek through just because they're longer so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide them in that little braid or that little pull that we did there just a little bit okay so it's even hard to get through there because it's gathered pretty good okay so go one way just a few stitches 
then go back the other way and I'm going to do the same on the other side. It fell off or I'd do it with you. Do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to snip it off. Okay. Just so I don't have those ends hanging, even though they're the inside in the inside. Okay. So go ahead and do that and then I'll see you back. Okay. So when you turn it right side out, you'll have a piece that looks like this. And now we're going to take that head that we made. Um, I have a one end isn't quite as close, but it's not going to come apart. So that's okay. I'm going to pop it in there right in the middle. Then I'm going to pull on this, uh, yarn end to tighten okay and that's how you put your second layer in to your little bunny head okay okay again always being careful because sometimes we want to just pull on this and, and pull so tight um and we risk breaking it because our strength is more than what we think it is so i'm going to go ahead that's all in there nicely i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put this on my, the yarn end on my needle again, and I'm going to sew this end closed now. And then we'll have this part all completed and we'll work on the ears, okay? Okay. So I closed it as much as I need to. I'm going to pull that through. Tie it off into a really tight knot. And I don't have to do it twice. I went around this circle three or four times. It's not going to come undone. And I'm going to hide that just like that. Cut this off and there we go we've completed this part of our bunny now we're going to do the arms and the ears and we're going to set up our addy 22 and i'll see you back good job my friends we're almost there <laughs> so for the ears i've got my addy 22 set up we're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder we're going to use our working yarn Okay, we're going to do a long tail cast on with the yarn that we want the color of our ear to be. Go behind that first block, in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way on, around like a long tail cast on. Before you get to the end, set your row counter to zero so it's ready to go. I'm behind that or in front of that last white needle. And now I'm going to knit 20 rows. Okay. It's funny because sometimes the, the bigger Addy hates a yarn that the, that the smaller Addy loves. And that's the case for most of my yarn, actually. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but oh well. So I'm going to keep going around until I get to 20 rows, and then I'll see you back. Oop, dropped one, so I'm going to fix that on my way around. But um, go keep going until you get to 20 rows. I might have spoke too soon. <laughs> no, actually it does go, it works really well on my, on my smaller machine. Um, so I'm going to go around until I get to 20 rows done, finish my 20th row, and then we're going to add some waist yarn because we need one end of our arm to be um, a straight edge. Okay, so go ahead and keep cranking until you get 20 rows done and see me back. Got my 20 rows done. I'm going to cut off my end, put it between my last white, my first black, add my waist yarn. I'm going to hold both of those so I can do um, a little tie there just to make sure it's secure. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to do eight or nine, seven, eight or nine rows, however many you're comfortable with, okay? I usually do seven. Right. <laughs> or however many I feel like at the time. So keep going. And if I'm talking and I forget, well, it could be 15. <laughs> so anyways, that's enough. I don't know how many that is. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to cut off my end, open my yarn feeder, put it in between the last white, the first black. And I'm going to crank, and the second time around, it comes off. Isn't that a dream? Except for this last one snagged a little bit, of course. Always got to be one bad one in the crowd, okay? So we're going to stretch it like that. And we're going to make a second one. And when we're done making the second one, we're going to uh, assemble them, okay? Put them, sew them together. All right, so when you get the arms off your machine you're going to close the end just like we did with the 46 needle one this is the 22 but we're going to just do it the same way so you're going to put your your stitch marker in that first stitch and then to the left of it you see the the two stitches one on top of the other you're going to take the top one okay then rather than counting <clears throat> excuse me uh, 23 over this is only 22 needles so we're going to go to 11 so where's my crochet hook where are you crochet hook anyways we're gonna we're going to count over one 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 and 12, these two here, are your very side stitches. So you're going to um, put this one on your crochet hook and work it just the way I showed you um, for the larger panel and close that off until you get to the end and then bind it off and take off your waist yarn. Okay. I don't think I need to do that with you because I just did. So it's the same way, just uh, less stitches. So go ahead and do that with both of them and then I'll see you back. Okay. So you got that done and it looks like this. Okay. Now you're going to pull on that other end and cinch it. Okay. Just like so. Okay, now put that end on your needle. And we are going to make sure that this is flat. Make sure that you're, that, well, it'll automatically go there when you cinch it. But we're going to now sew up the side. So to do that, first we're going to just um, reinforce this little end here. Just uh, to make it. A round tip just like that okay so I just I just went through the, the stitches on both sides there and, and reinforced it now we're going to find our end um, on this one I'm move, move it up a little closer I want my wide part of my V to be at the left okay so that naturally lines up on this side I'm going to make sure it lines up. on this side it's naturally the other way so I'm just going to give it a little twist so that I have the wide part of the V on that side too okay and we're going to do the mattress stitch all right, very, very simple to do. I'm gonna go in there, pick up two bars. I'll, this, this first one, because it's so close to the tip, you might have a hard time seeing, but uh, I'll just go up a little further and you'll see. Pick up those two on that other side. Okay, so now maybe you can see better because I'm a little further up. So I'm going to, this is where I came out. I'm gonna go into that same stitch and I'm going to pick up two bars. So two stitches, pull that through. Then where it came out here, I'm going to go in there and pick up two stitches, two bars, just like that. See, there's two bars on my needle. Go across to the other side and where I came out, I'm going to go in, pick up two bars. I'm going to go back and forth like that till I get up to the top, okay? But before I get any farther, I'm going to just pinch the end there and I'm going to pull on this working yarn and it will, if it doesn't snag, there we go, and it will tighten that up for you so that it, now it looks like it's just uh, um, all, all sewn together nicely and it looks like it's it's never had a, um, a separation, okay? So I'm going to go back into there and best to use a needle that doesn't have such a sharp point on it because it snags into the um, fabric when you're doing it. This is the one that I just grabbed and that's why I had that trouble. So if you have a needle that, um, that has a dollar end on it, let me just show you what I normally use. If you have one that has a dollar and dollar and dollar and how do you say that word? <laughs> a dollar end on it. Um, D U L L E R. <laughs> use that. And so these these metal ones are perfect for that. Or um, you can use steel ones like this that also have um, the end that's not so sharp. And that works a little bit better actually. I'll use that for the next one. Okay. So you keep going all the way up to the top of your work okay every so often just pulling it so that it closes that okay so keep going till you get to the top and then when you get to the top you're going to just go through those two top stitches and you're going to tie it off in a knot and um, leave your end don't hide it because we're going to use it to sew it onto our um, body okay so go ahead and do that to both of them and then I'll see you back so I sewed one on for you and what I do is okay so we know that this is where our seam is down the center wherever this is is tied off that's the seam so I'm going to fold it in half so that that seam is in the middle I don't want the seam on the side like that I'm going to put it in the middle um, and that's uh, what's going to go down so that on this side and up in the top and up in the back in the back on this side back side you don't see the seam the seam is down there you don't see it anyways it's hidden really really well um, because of the way we sewed it but but that's how I do it I'm going to have it like that then I'm going to just go through to the other side and what I do is I tie a knot and that's my middle the middle of my arm right so now when I take my my um, piece I'm going to put this down here I find my my center right like that okay and then I place because this this is sewn in the center we lined it up with the center I'm going to pick up those that stitch right there right at the neckline and in the center 
and then place it. That's how I know my arm is centered because I put it in the center of the arm and in the center of the of the body there. Okay, and so then I come up. So I'm going from the front to the back, go through that top layer, go through the next layer like that. Pull that tight. Then I'm gonna go into that neck, middle neck area. Pick up another piece, snug it up, then bring it over to the top again, go on over the top there and through the bottom. Pull it nice and tight snug then I'm gonna go in do the same thing it takes about four stitches pull it nice and snug and when you're swinging along the along the side of the neck there don't don't put your stitches too far apart you need them close okay then I'm going to snug that up then what I do let me just turn this so it's facing me, is I just take this piece of yarn and I go underneath till I get to the middle. Just like that. Pull on it so that this corner comes nice and rounded into the body, just like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Hide that. And then when I get to this end of the arm, I'm gonna tie it off a knot and then hide my yarn into the center of the um, arm. So that's how I put my arms on. And they're always centered because I'm, I'm putting my center, st I'm starting in the center of the arm and attaching it to the center of the body where the seam is okay where this natural fold is okay and then then it always lines up perfectly so um that's how i do it so i hope that helps and go ahead and do that and then we are going to uh, make the ears now it's time to do the ears so what you do for the ears is exactly the same thing that you did for the arms when it comes to how you knit okay you're going to do a long tail cast on with your working yarn oops Behind that first black, in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. Okay, a long tail cast on. When it's in front of that last white one, you put it in your in your yarn feeder. You set your row counter to zero, and you're going to knit 30 rows. Okay, so once you're finished knitting your 30 rows, um, we just did 20 for the arms. You're going to do 30 for the ears. Then you're going to add your waist yarn, just like what we did for the arms. Um, you're going to put on seven or eight rows of waist yarn then you're going to crank your handle twice and remove your your project you're going to make two of those those are the ears so the ears are made the same way the arms are they are sewn differently but they're made on your machine the same way the arms are but instead of 20 rows we're doing 30 rows so go ahead and do that and when you're finished uh see me back and i'll show you um how we uh stitch up the ears and attach them to our project so I have my ears done. This is what they look like when they come off the machine. Okay, we're going to cinch cinch this end. Okay, this other end, we're gonna close up like we like we um, did on the arms. Okay, you're going to put your stitch marker in your appropriate stitches here. Oops. This one. And then to the left of it, the top one. You're going to make sure your yarn ends are outside. Then you're going to sew it up again. You're going to go around to um, your 11th and 12th stitch and you're going to stitch it up like we've been doing, okay? And you're going to close that end. And when you have that end closed, then we're going to attach it like this, okay? So, um, but I just wanted to show you how the arms look. That's, that's what they're looking like. It looks great. And this is what our ear is going to look like once it's on. Okay. So it's going to look like that. Um, but I'm going to show you once I, once I get this end closed up and this cinched closed, you cinch it up and, and tie it off just like we normally have done, bind it off so that it's um, nice and tight. Okay. Um, but don't cut this. Uh, then I'm going to, um, come back and show you what I do to make this ear like that. Okay. So go ahead and finish that off and see me back. Okay. So I have my needle threaded here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cinch this closed and I'm going to just pick up some stitches on the end there just to uh, secure it. Okay, then I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to secure it. Then I'm going to hide this up in between. Cut it off. throw that out and I'm going to just flip that so that the uh, sewing is on the inside okay so now we've got this other end to take care of 
Now this is too long to put on the bunny's head. We are going to um, put it in half, but we're going to also cinch it a little bit. So um, I will put this end on. I really got to get those metal needles. That, uh, like I, I've said before in my videos, like that metal one that I showed you earlier, um, there's a smaller one and all of mine have broken from such such an, an incredible amount of use and I can't, um, haven't been able to replace them yet. But I'm going to anyways, um, weave in and out of the top here. No rhyme or reason to it, you just do it. <laughs> okay, until you get to the end there. Okay, and then you're just going to pull it just a little bit until it's about, uh, let me just see, that's about right there. So if I measure that just so you have a reference, it's two inches. Okay, so it's two inches um, in width. And then I'm going to tie this off just so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, get bigger again. Okay, so just like so. And then what I'm going to do, after I have that cinched off just like that, I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to just tie the, or um, sew the end, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to sew it onto my bunny head so that it's like this. So I'm going to go up to the top here. Yep, see that's perfect. I did two inches on the other side too. I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm going to just line it up so it's about a quarter of an inch from the hole there. Um, and it's centered with the arm. So once my arms are on, then I know I'm going to hold that so it's centered with my arm. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to um, sew this on. Now, you notice I left the tail on this one. Um, I do not, when I'm doing my um, arms and my ears, actually, I do not hide those tail ends until I've got both on. So until I have both arms on or both ears on, because that way I can, once I get them attached, um, I can see if I have them straight and where I like them. And if I don't, then it's easy to take off. If I tie it, um, fasten it right after I'm finished, um, each one, like the first one, then, and then hide the ends. If I need to move it at all, uh, it's just too hard to do. So that's just the practice that I have. Okay. So then I'm into the head here and then I come up and over so that I go from top to bottom. And the reason why I do that is because then it gives it a nice finish up here, okay? With your with your sewing yarn here that you've got. And then into the top of the head. There you go. And then up and over and down. See how this loop then makes a nice a nice edging here. So it looks like it's it's been attached, doesn't look like it's a separate piece. Okay? So now I'm going into the head back around and down. Then I'm gonna just hold it to the front here and see what I think. And I think it's perfect. I love it when it works out the first time. <laughs> okay, so that's how we're gonna do that. So now I can go ahead, because I see that it's placed properly, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just tie these off, go back into there, pick up a stitch on the corner there, tie it off, do it twice. Oops, that's a little too far over. Like that. And then I can hide my yarn end down in through the head. Up and cut it off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that one now that tie it off tightly and then hide it just like I just did this first one. And then we are almost ready, we are ready to do the face. Um, except for I'm gonna do a little uh, white flower um, to put on the head between the ears. We're gonna do that um, after we do our face. We're gonna do our face first, just in case um, you don't wanna do, where's my little yarn thingy here? Just in case you don't wanna do it, then um, you don't have to scroll through the video to get to it. So we're gonna, we're going to put the face on first and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it a little embellishment for the top of the head, okay? In a different color. Now, I just also wanna tell you that you, I, I did it in solid pink um, this time, but you can, you can do like um, a band down here in a different color or you can do it striped. Of course, you can do your bunnies in whatever color combinations you want. This is, a, this is a plain one because it's easier to teach that way. I show you in plenty of videos how to um, do color changes and stuff. So um, I'm not worried about that. But uh, for this one, um, 
I'm just prefer I'm just doing it plain and I'm going to add a, a little bit of a different color of um of a flower at the top of the head um after we do the face. So go ahead and uh finish putting on your ears and then meet me back and we will work on the face. It's already so cute. Already. Love it. Okay, so for, for her little face, I think I'm going to use gray. Um, I contemplated. I held up fuchsia and different pinks to it. Because this is a blush pink, it's a softer pink. Um, I just, I didn't like how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, gray for her facial features, okay? So I'm going to come, go um, into the side here, and I'm going to come up where I think I want the nose to be. Um, picturing it about there, okay? I'm going to pull that through. Okay, and then I'm going to, this, this is, so this is above the bar of this stitch, and then I'm going to go below the bar of that stitch. So there's this top bar and this top bar. I'm just going to go underneath that, and I'm going to come over, one row over, there, okay, just like that, and then I'm going to go, see, you can see from here, there's one, one row of stitches or two different uh, rows of uh, two different um, strands however you want to look at it okay so I'm going to do that same thing from this one so these would be the two strands so I'm going to go down into here and come back at the point and gently pull that through now you can leave it exactly like that um, maybe just go over it twice and have a crossbar up here and one down there um, and uh, just just leave it like that and and that looks that looks great if you have trouble doing a v um, then then go ahead and do that I'm going to go back over there through there and then back down into the center and I'm going to start filling in so I'm going to come up into that just about to the corner not quite but I'm going to come over top of that bar because I don't want to see that bar at the top when I'm done. I want to use it as my guide, but I'm going to go over it like that, okay? Then I'm going to come back into that point. I'm going to come right up beside it, pushing it down with my finger because then it helps to keep the um, strands in place, okay? And I'm going to pull that and just work it with my finger to get it into the right place, okay? Then I'm going to go down. I'm going to repeat that process all across, okay? Gets tangled around the big bunny ears, okay? Oops, sorry, I knocked my camera there for a bit, okay? Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to come straight down. That's about the middle, so that's going to come straight down. Sometimes you have to move your point a little bit lower, too, the thicker you get, and that's totally okay. Okay. So that one's going to be guided with my thumb and go straight down. Now I'm going to just fill it in the rest the opposite way, just how I did here. I'm going to go down just a little bit farther um, than what I was so I can make my points a little bit lower. I don't want that edge of the nose to look square. It takes some practice, but really watch this over and over again a couple times till just so you can see the technique. Um, and, and really, it's not hard. You just have to you just have to follow the patterning and, and you'll get it right. Okay, so I'm back into that point. Up over that guide bar there that I put. Right next to that stitch. <laughs> every one I pull, every one gets stuck on something. Okay, and then down, guiding it with your finger. Okay, now I'm going to do back down into that point. Up. And down. Um, and doesn't that look good? Okay, so then I'm going to go this because it's up top here. I want to make a little bit of a mouth or a little bit of a, a straight line down. So um, I'm going to take my yarn. I'm going to actually cut some of this off. It's, it's well, no, I'll leave it because I'm going to guide it up to do the eyes. I'm going to go back down into this point here. And then I'm going to go down one, two and a half stitches. Like so. And then come back. I'm And see, when you visualize it, you'll see, okay, well, this looks like it's a straighter line than this one kind of gets cut off. So when I come back, I'm going to 
go into that point, come back up to this corner, just like that, okay? And then go back down. And I wanna have a double thickness there, so I'm gonna come back down, back into the point, And you see how that changed it? It made it perfect. So um, because this was a shorter strand, so you, you just got to visualize it and fix it. So now I'm going to go up and I'm going to follow this up. Let me see if I can grab this bobby pin here. This is where my corner is. I'm going to go over that strand, over that strand, and over that strand and right into there. Okay. Yeah, I think gray was the right color choice for this for sure. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to go over that strand, over that. Well, you know, you'll have to eyeball it. You'll have to just go up. I'm going to, it's over one row of stitches. I'm going to just go up over one complete row of stitches and back down into, into that middle part. Just like that. Okay. Don't pull it too tight. Then I'm going to go over just the two bars right here. Come back. Just like that. Okay, then back over that bar and up equally to what I just did here. Okay. And then I've already got two layers here, so I'm going to go down into here and come straight up there because I don't want to put, put three strands on there. I'm just going to do two, okay? So that's one strand there, two strands in the middle, one strand here. So I'm going to go here, go under the stuffing, because I do not want to see that gray where the eye is not meant to be. Like, I only want to see the outline of the eye. I don't want to see the, the gray trailing underneath. So I've got two strands here, two strands here. Let me turn this little girl around. And I'm going to go back in here so that I have two strands there. Okay, so if I follow this nose up, the corner of the nose, I've got one, two stitches up. So I'm going to go one, two, well, I'm going to go to this one. One, two stitches up, and I'm going to follow that same, that same row. So you want to make sure that your bar, this bar that's going here, is following along the same row, okay? Otherwise, you get, uh, we actually, we got to go a little bit further. Let me see here. No, we don't. We're going to go um, up to there. And then down. And up. My eyes might be a little too close together. We're going to figure that out as soon as I get this, this part done. Back down. How do I find that too close? You know, I don't think so. I think that's actually okay. Let me just see here. But I think I made this eye bigger than this one. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Um, yeah, and so you're going to finish this second eye the same way you did this eye. Uh, these ones are a little closer together than I normally do my eyes, but I'm actually, I actually like how it looks. So I'm going to leave it because it's such a small face. Um, on my bigger bunnies, um, my chubby bunnies, I put them farther apart, but I don't think that's necessary on a little one like this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to duplicate this over here, but I'm, instead of starting down here, I should have started up here. So from the corner here, I'm going to take it up to the corner there and then work my way this way. That's where I went wrong, okay? So I'm going to pull that out. I can find the strand. I find that um, sometimes the face takes the longest because you want it to be beautiful. Um, and it's, it's uh, sometimes you think you're getting it in the right place and just like what I just did, um, I, I wasn't. So I'm gonna go down under there. I'm gonna come up here in line with the corner of my nose. There we go. And I'm gonna start that way instead, okay? And I'm going to then go down and over 
and up. I had it, I started in the wrong place. So when you, when you move up to this corner, then go straight across and do the, a mirror image of it. So go to this corner, then go down and across and up, um, in the same, same pattern as what you did this one. Um, but on the opposite side. So go ahead and do that. And when you're done, I'll see you back. All right, so the face is finished and I actually really like it. I think it's very soft. And once I get another color on there, um, I think it'll be great. And I might do a little bit of duplicate stitching on the body here, but um, we're going to just do the flower first and then I'll, I'll visualize it and see what I think. Okay, so stick with me, my friends. <laughs> All right, so for the flower, um, it's very simple. We don't need uh, any waste yarn, just a long tail cast on and cast off. We're gonna line up our last white, first black needle. Put the yarn behind that first block, in front of the next one, in front and behind, all the way around, just like what we've been doing. Or I would go slower, but since we've done this so many times already, <laughs> no need to. You can set your counter or just count out um, 12 rows, because that's all we're going to do is 12 rows. This is Karen's um, yarn. I, the, the jacket is off of it, so I don't know what it is. I did make a project with it at some point. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure what it is. You use whatever yarn that you like um, and knit out 12 rows. Okay, just like that. Then you're gonna do a long tail cast off. So you're gonna cut a good length of yarn because you're gonna use it to sew on too. So um, a good foot. Put that in the middle, shut your yarn feeder. And we're gonna do a long tail cast off. Okay, so we're going to put our, our needle, needle on our thread, just like that, okay. We're going to make sure that this goes behind that last one, that last white one, because we still have to knit that off, okay. Then we're going to take off one stitch at a time, just as we've done um, in another part of, other part of, so the project, okay. So we're going to take them all off. So you keep going around until you get all of your um, stitches removed from your needle and then I'll see you back, okay? Okay, there's our cute little piece. You're going to just stretch it, okay? I'm sorry, I don't remember what this yarn is. Um, I know it's a Karen yarn, um, but I, I don't, I, I'm using a scrap piece, so I'm not sure what it's called. Um, you might know. <laughs> uh, or surf through my videos because I'm sure I did a project with it and it's probably on there. But um, um, just offhand in my mind, I don't know. I, I post so many projects, I, I'm not sure now. But so you're going to go ahead and close that off. Okay. Then you're going to just leave that. You're going to go ahead and you're going to do it. Actually, you're not going to leave it. You're going to... Um, because you can leave it, but this will it'll be easier if you actually um, put it through the center. So take that yarn end put it through that center and bring it into the middle. Just like that. I do like the wrong side, like the garter side of this, um, of this uh, yarn. I think it looks very, very pretty. I know I used it for, for the eggs too that I did, but um, we, we can go ahead and now cinch this other end, just like we did the other side. Okay, we've got this tail outside because we wanna be able to sew the art to, to um, tie them together. I'm not even gonna bother hiding it around those, the first layer of stitches because this is such a small little thing that with this um, other tail that's coming out, all I have to do is tie a knot and that uh, secures it without having to go around the, the circle, okay? And so we've got our little circle here. Perfect, so cute. And then we're going to we're gonna hide this little end, the short end, hide the short end, not the long end, because we need the long end for sewing. I'm just gonna go into that little center and come out and cut it off. Okay, just like that. Pick up on that and it's, it's snug under there, okay? So now what we're gonna do, very, very simply make a flower. So we're going to take our yarn end that we've got here. We're going to I'm going to feed it up into the middle here. I want it to, I want to start from the middle point. It was just a little off. Um, so we're going to make sure it's in the middle there. Okay. And then you're going to just weave it between all layers until you get to the top. Okay. 
like that and then follow that same path down you don't have to put too many in there and come out the come out the middle come back up the middle okay and then what you're going to do is just slightly pull on that and you see how that makes um a bit of a the beginning of a one side of the pedal now you're going to just go over a few just it's all um eyeballing it okay you're going to just go over and do the same thing come back down don't make it don't make it too difficult don't think too hard on it just do it <laughs> trust me and and you'll have a better outcome okay if you if you try to be way too precise um you're going to get frustrated so then you pull on this and you see how that makes just a nice little pedal there and i'm going to go around and I'm going to continue in a likewise manner. Till I get as many petals on here as. Uh, as will fit. And I think it'll be about five. My, my goal is always about five. You want to have an odd number. Um, so I'm going to pull on that. See how pretty that is. Just coming over. I'm going to use maybe that side. Well, that's just more peachy. So we're going to see. We're going to hold it up. And we're going to see which one we like better. And that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. If I see, I'm going to, I know that I want to get three in here. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's, it just works out. You just, you just gotta be brave. <laughs> sure, brave, they say. Be brave. Okay, go back down. Come up that middle. Okay. and just slightly pull on it okay so one two three i'm gonna go in the middle of this last piece and i'll have five see how easy that is it's so so fun looks so cute but so easy okay go back down it's getting close to supper i've been working down here again for a good amount of time i my craft room is downstairs and uh I've got to go to the co-op and get some groceries before I have supper. It's 3.30 already. So um, once I get this flower on, I'm out of here. I've got to move on to the next important thing of the day. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish you could all tell me what you're having for supper. I need some new ideas. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Like, isn't that just so pretty? And so then I'm going to take that and I'm going to sew it onto her head. Just like that. Or like that. Oh, I like that side too. Oh my goodness, this is going to be hard. Or you can put it in the middle, but I like to do it a little off to the side. So I got to contemplate which side I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do that side. So that or that. That looks a little too peachy to me, but yet this color in here is the right color. So um, you will have seen what I chose at the beginning of the video. But for right now, I'm going to go get some groceries, make some supper, and then I'll finish this off this evening. Oh, that's just so cute. All right, my friends. Keep going and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I'm going to just add a little clip to this video to show you how I did the bow for the um, for the blue and white one. I'm going to take my, my yarn and I'm going to do a long tail cast on be going behind that first black needle in front of the next, behind and in front all the way around on my 22 needle machine. Put it into my yarn feeder once I get in front of the last white one. And then I'm going to crank out Sticky on the first row that's front one I'm gonna do 12 rows two three that's four I think five six seven eight this table is so wobbly nine 10, 11, and 12, okay? And so then when I get around to the front, I'm going to do a long tail cast off. So I'm gonna cut my yarn with a longer tail. I'm gonna open that latch, put it between the last white and the first black, and we're gonna do a long tail cast off. No waste yarn needed for this particular bow, okay? 
close my little latch there. Bring it around. Take one off at a time. Until I get some slack on it. Okay, so I have it off, that's all great. And now I'm going to cinch both ends. After, after I stretch it, I'm gonna cinch both ends. Let me remove my Addy and I'll show you. Okay, so go ahead and tighten up both ends. You don't have to make it completely closed because we're gonna cover over that end. So I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna go around and, and uh, reinforce it like we do normally with, with um, our beanie. Then I'm gonna stick that through the hole Bring it out this end, because I'm going to go ahead and cinch this other end now. And I'm not even going to put it on my yarn needle for right now, because all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these two close together really snug. Okay. Just like so. Okay, so now we have that all snugged, nice and tight. Um, and what we're gonna do is just even it out so that our circles are, our middle centers are, are in the middle. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, we already tied a knot, but let me just tie one more for, for good measure. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut this little one off or one of these off and make it little. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to tuck that in there I'm gonna scrunch this together and I'm gonna wrap around. Okay, just keep wrapping. That's gonna be in the back, so I'm gonna cut that off once I've got enough wraps, but just like that, okay? I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer together over the loop there. And this is a little bow tie. Okay, so now with this little end, I'm gonna tie a knot. This should have been longer. If I would have had a longer one, then I would have sewn it on right with that, but um, it's a little bit short. So I'm gonna to have to attach another piece of yarn um, to this project, and then I'll, I'll just hide this underneath. And that's what you're gonna to use to sew on. But that's my little bow tie. Isn't it cute? <laughs> So simple to do, but so cute. So that's how I made my bow tie for the um, for the white bunny with the blue stripes. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that and then we can uh, add it on. And there you have it, a beautiful cuddle bunny. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed doing it for you and with you. So if uh, you make up one of these bunnies, please post it in my um, group, uh, Koala Knits and Knacks. It's a Facebook group. If you haven't joined it yet, please do so. I'd love to have you as a part of that wonderful group of people. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that as well. And lastly, um, please, please, please hit that like button um, under the video because that's how YouTube picks it up and promotes it. So um, thanks again for joining me. I sure um, had fun making this with you. So uh, take care and have a wonderful day, my friends.